So hi, my name is Dr. Johanna Fung. I am a GoGN alumnus. Uh, very proud to have been a member of the team since, I think it was 2018. I, I joined quite late in my um, in my doctoral studies, but it was a result of another GoGN member saying, hey, you should get a, get involved with these guys. I'm here on Larrakia country in Northern Australia, also known as Darwin. And I work at the College of Indigenous Futures Education and Arts at Charles Darwin University. And I studied a lot of the public policy that we're involved in here in a very, very multicultural and very rich um, cultural kind of landscape here in the Northern Territory. So my, uh, my fellowship we'll, we'll be discussing here in, to, in today's interview. And it's just a wonderful opportunity. Um, so my fellowship was about open educational practices in cultural studies um, and workforce development. So I was teaching a um, core unit, uh, first year kind of foundation studies unit, and I renovated it with a number of different OEP. Um, and I did an analysis on how students felt about their uh, relative workforce uh, confidence at the end of it with um, a lot of the OEP lends itself very much to um, workforce competencies. So uh, that was my project. I think having a bit of flexibility, um, as well as the touchstones, exactly like I mean, having the nice kind of low stakes blog post to kind of report, like it was more like a diary, um, that was really helpful. Um, to, to keep me, uh, I guess, accountable to a broader audience. Um, but also that was very flexible and the team were really flexible with me um, taking t a bit more time to collect more data and then to add to my analysis because I had an extension to my ethics. So even though there was uh, the project fund, you know, was like only for three semesters, I, I extended it to four and that's been really helpful too because um, it's given me a heck of a lot more data to work with. Another thing that worked really well um, is uh, just the support, being able to reach out and ask for a little bit more of a skill development support that I hadn't gotten during my PhD. Of course, when you're doing your PhD, you're kind of focused on one methodology and one kind of analysis. And I was using a new kind of analysis I had never used in vivo before. Um, I had only uh, done some very minimal um, text analysis in my previous studies. And so this was really helpful um, to, to get my head around another form of analysis, another, another skill uh, with my research. So it was really helpful to kind of get my feet wet uh, and then just, you know, of course, the extra time really helped with um, me being able to refine that. And then I get to apply it in other publications that I've done. So that's been really good. Well, I guess, you know, I, I because the, the, the time poor nature of everyone on the team um, as, as such, and the, because we were so far apart, like the global kind of thing, I mean, isn't really a huge deal right now, but time zones, I think, can't improve time zones. <laughs> Had a, a few more opportunities to gain a few of those extra skills in a more systemic way, then maybe I, I would have not taken so long to develop them. Um, but in terms of what the what GoGN could have done or to, to be improved or what, I, I don't know. I really don't know. You guys have so much that you're already doing. So um, having an ability to report in a, in a webinar and do a big presentation was really great. I really don't know what, I've, I mean, I think that what was really interesting about the big landscape of all of this was that I was feeling um, kind of like a lot of, because I'd just finished my PhD the year beforehand, I, um, I was like feeling like I should have had a postdoc lined up, but there was nothing going on. Of course, there was COVID. And here in Australia, the higher education system and the, um, the funding and, and, and whatnot around humanities and education research, especially, um, 
have been completely slashed and there wasn't really anything available. So, um, you know, the, the fellowship came along uh, to really help boost uh, the work I could do and to provide, you know, just a little bit of scope to um, to disseminate more and to, to share something of, of national interest here in Australia at the time was really big deal being job ready. So uh, having making students, you know, in a, into a situation where they would really felt or were prepared for the job market. And so being able to um, support that was really great. I mean, of course, I, I, you know, no one's ever going to re refuse more money. So ideally, uh, a bit more money would have been uh, an improvement because that would have been able to allow me to dedicate a lot more time. Because um, the project I found was a bit big. <laughs> and it still has such legs that, um, yeah, it could, it could still, I mean, it's still getting traction here at the university, the, the Office of Teaching and Learning. Um, formerly known as the Office of Teaching and Learning Education Strategy, um, are piloting a whole bunch of different pedagogies and tools. And I, you know, my data seems to be a very interesting to, to some of those people. So being able to collaborate in, within the institution is, is really been a good thing that comes out of this as well. Um, a big takeaway for for the the fellowship was that within my job role it's it's helped me kind of gain a foothold in terms of a workforce development person but also a cultural studies person and helped me get my uh teeth a little bit deeper into um the, the practical applications of my thesis uh, my doctoral studies was also about workforce development and indigenous knowledges and so being able to, to apply that in a, um, in, a, in, a, in a more broad cultural studies and workforce cultures, um, I guess, made it a really uh, smooth transition to be able to talk about it with other academics and other, you know, executive staff around the university that aren't from our college. So that was a nice big takeaway locally. But the biggest takeaway for interstate and national uh, significance here in Australia, I think is that because the former federal government made a big uh, funding structure around job readiness and higher education's ability to support job ready uh, graduates, um, I think that a, a big takeaway was that I gained a lot of insight into how to talk about the value of humanities, cultural studies, as being job ready skills and so having some time to do some analysis on that via the fact that you know we were using open pedagogies and practices and a lot of power sharing um and, and of course you know open textbooks uh open and free resources uh, open and peer review we were doing a lot of that in in this in the unit when i was continually kind of renovating that and so um being able to talk to students as well as um, colleagues um, and, you know, kind of people um, on SIG groups and, you know, on national levels uh, was really, was really um, positive. I suppose the challenge with, you know, these days in higher education and, and the kind of research is having enough time to sink your teeth into it properly and get it done. Um, it seems to be like, you know, the expectation that people expect, a, you know, really in-depth, high-impact research to be done, um, you know, in half a, in half a day a week or, um, you know, two slots. And it's like, you know, dis discovering how to work, um, I think, was the most challenging. Overcoming that, though, I mean, I'm really blessed with a very um, human sense leadership <laughs> so um in the four days a week that i work i was teaching two of them and two of them were dedicated to research and community service and um i was and you know it, it, i was allowed to kind of work at home or do things flexibly so that um i could get you know my head really into something rather than you know disrupting going to office commuting and 
and doing all the all the logistics associated with removing myself from a comfort zone. So I think working at home uh, is a huge, huge thing that's helped overcome the challenges of getting research done for some people. I mean, I don't have children or a family or dogs or anything like that. So I don't have those caring responsibilities um, that working from home or at home um, isn't always supportive of. So um, I'm, I'm lucky that way. But to have the flexibility is really, a really um, helpful to overcome any challenges associated with doing humanities uh, and educational research. <laughs> and, uh, thankfully, we've got a new government here in Australia that um, is, is more likely to be supportive of the work that we do. Um, and so uh, looking forward to setting our times. I guess having regular check-ins with uh, with yourselves and doing, like I said, the blog posts was really helpful. They were kind of low stakes, but also accountable um, measures. Um, and also being able to talk uh, to you, Paco, about the different kind of analysis methods and using in vivo in, in a number of ways. And um, it was just something I never picked up in my PhD. Um, we don't do coursework, or I didn't do PhD by coursework here. I just kind of followed along and worked with senior researchers on their projects and uh, ended up doing a PhD on the projects I was working on. So, so you know, it, it was really helpful to be able to pick up more skills that way um, as part of a structured piece of work. Well, there's just so many different kinds. I, you know, I've, from what I've seen, people have dedicated their fellowship to so many different aspects of open education and resources and practices. I, I would feel awful to give advice. I mean, I think that, you know, I, I was actually, I think I used my fellowship as a way to kind of consolidate and really be super pragmatic and practical and in some ways very political. Um, you know, I, I chose something that, um, I thought was, you know, in, in retrospect, quite safe to study. And I was really practical as well, because I've always been interested in it. I mean, I did my PhD on a similar subject. Um, considering the nature of the Gojian community and the open education community, um, I find that maybe it was, it would be useful to, to, to really give the open education value set a boost, which is something that I kind of did, but in a way that I kind of, gave it a, a vision into the overlap of the neoliberal agenda of job readiness uh, and what open practices and, and the humanities can can do to really make that happen. So um, it's really been fabulous because it's given me a lot more practice of talking about what I do, like what, you know, what we were, we were always encouraged to get our elevator pitch together and, you know, through the, through the fellowship, uh, the ability to gather all that evidence from students and work with students um, to, to keep reshaping uh, the unit that we were teaching them, um, the unit of work. Um, some people call it a class or a course, um, but, you know, the ability to keep centering student voices and to make that part of an open practice. I think that's helped me articulate the value of that a lot. Um, and also, you know, to have my elevator pitch ready to say, you know, this is what I do. And like, you know, some of the golden nuggets of, of, you know, quotes that students gave me were stuff like, even though it's online, it still feels like I'm in a classroom. I mean, that was a magic thing to have a student, uh, you know, a couple students actually over the course of the fellowship said that. So um, to be able to get that kind of, a, you know, feedback from students via, you know, discussing open practices and these types of around cultural studies concepts, um, it was it was quite powerful. So being able to um, to keep discussing that and to keep promoting that to colleagues, I've got a couple colleagues now that are wanting to work closer on that type of thing. So I'm I think it's helped position me in the academic um, mm -hmm. world a bit stronger.
Well, like I said, like postdocs aren't don't really seem to be a thing here. Um, and they, of course, with the disruptions in the last few years and the big global changes that we've had, I'm actually going to go and do another fellowship or doing um, a postdoc somewhere else. Uh, doesn't really feel like it's an option. Um, so I think, you know, a way to kind of transform what the postdoc experience might be is it, it has come out of my fellowship. So in a way is to keep creating and co-creating knowledge and practices around, you know, open education, online education. Um, I'm teaching pre-service teachers now um, in all of my classes. And so um, I've been able to propagate and share the GoGN research with them. And, um, you know, of course, give back to the network. It's been so wonderful and generous. So I want to just, I, I think I just want to keep growing and building on the networks I have. Um, we're, we're expected to expand so far and to try for so many big opportunities. And somehow that st translates to things that seem unreachable. Um, but I think what it means is for me is to, to just keep working um, on the networks that I have with GoGN um, nationally and now locally, it's it's um, it's really helped understand what a network can do and can be. So um, the current members or doctoral students, I'd say you know reach out as much as you want. I was absolutely shameless um, on Twitter. <laughs> When I first started my PhD, I was absolutely shameless. And then it was one of the, it was that through that GoGN network that I started following people and found the people that I needed in my local country uh, and in my area. And then, and then they recommended I join GoGN because I hadn't known about it. And so there was, it was just, just being shameless and just try to connect because that's why we're all here doing this work to, 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 to be sharing it with other people. Um, it's one of the most friendly Twitter um, communities, I think, ever. <laughs> so, um, but also, you know, s special interest groups like the Ascalite um, SIG is where, you know, um, Adrian Stagg is another GoGN alumni and um, alumnus, pardon me. And, uh, you know, he was the one that recommended. He's actually also been really instrumental in inviting and to, you know, the, the, com, com, collaborate with him and network with um, with other people that he's working with. And so I think we're sticking with the values of that. It's not traditional competitive academia in that sense. It's very much a community of practitioners and people who feel the same um, affinity for openness. It's really quite wonderful. So getting involved in those things. And of course, ALTC, which I need to remind, I need to remind myself to renew my membership again. Um, but yeah, this is really important to stay associated with different networks and associations and stay plugged in as much as you can in these busy times. You know, like, I was just a big fan of you guys. I think it's such a wonderful addition to, you know, the kind of the academic existence. I'm kind of obviously in my postdoc time at the moment, I'm getting to know a bit more about academia and how much it changes and goes with different political trends and funding cycles. And there's just, there's just a lot um, in terms of working in, in academia. And it's just really wonderful to have a, a, a wonderful supportive community of people that um, that care about openness and um, knowledge sharing and um, advocacy of that kind. So just really wonderful.